Dr. Finney, thank you so much for joining me today and taking the time out. We could not be more excited to have you as a speaker at MHS 2020. The way I maintained uh, my sanity during medical school, which is the world's largest, biggest ever survey course, <laughs> never getting any depth on anything. The way I maintained my sanity was going long bike rides. And what I learned very quickly, particularly in the mountains of, in the Bay Area in California, was if I didn't eat carbs starting the first hour, it was going to be a really bad trip home because once you hit the wall, it, you just feel terrible. Yeah. And so I was a, just experientially, I was an advocate of, of carbs and, and uh, endurance sport. Uh, and that was in the late 1980 or 1960s and early 1970s. And Bob Atkins' first book came out in 73. And I was doing my residency in, in Vermont. And I got into a dialogue with a couple of the uh, top diabetologists at the time who were also avid cross-country skiers. And one of them mentioned, hey, I was out with a friend of mine who went on this, this Atkins diet. I said, I don't know how he did it, but he lost like 40 pounds. And we went out and did this 30-mile cross-country ski loop. And he, and he said, you know, every hour I had to stop and eat. And this guy didn't eat it at all. And it didn't seem to be impairing us that it couldn't possibly be true. How is this happening? He was sneaking carbs when he weren't looking. He was eating candy. And we decided that this was a conundrum and we should study it. And so they gave me the opportunity when I finished my residency without actually doing an endocrine fellowship to uh, spend a year and do a project. And we did a project in untrained uh, uh, obese patients, put them on a very low calorie ketogenic diet um, in a metabolic ward. We studied them over six weeks. And at one week, as predicted, their performance really went down. But after six weeks, They'd lost a lot of weight. We made them wear a backpack with all the weight they'd lost. We had them walking uphill on the treadmill. And they could walk longer, even carrying the backpack, than they did at baseline. And they hadn't trained during this process. Wow. And sort of took me under their wing, and I took courses at MIT. And we did a study in uh, highly trained bike racers. In this case, we fed them enough fat that they didn't lose cal or didn't lose weight and studied them over four weeks. And their prodigious performance statistics – which were very high in terms of peak power and endurance time to exhaustion at baseline. Four weeks later, they hadn't changed. So they could do the same amount of work, but they did it on less than 10% of their energy coming from body carbohydrate reserves. Uh, and not, they were running on about 90% fat. And that was unbelievable. We got it published. And then, of course, the whole world collapsed because there was all this concern about ketogenic diets and sudden death because of a a really disastrous diet called the liquid protein diet that was promoted in a, a popular book at the time. And the whole thing really got pushed into um, a, a very negative zone. And I pretty much gave up on that and worked on other things. So I met Jeff Wolick in 2003 and he'd read my papers and he'd started doing low carb research. And uh, I say in all honesty, Jeff basically picked me up, dusted me off and said, you know, you got to get back into this. Uh, our big concerns were not that people could perform without many carbs or, or no carbs in the diet. The question was the long-term safety and the work that Jeff and I have done uh, since uh, the first publication was in 2006. Together we've published about 15 papers, 18 papers since then. And it's really focused on safety of, of this. And once we had the safety stuff worked out, then we felt that, that we could offer this as a, a concerted science-based program and we met um, the remarkable athlete, world champion for athletes, Sami Inkinen, who just happened to be a Silicon Valley golden boy because he's his first endeavor in a tech-based company resulted in it being sold for a few billion dollars. But he, as a, a highly trained endurance athlete, had uh, actually developed uh, type uh, or uh, pre-diabetes. And he was eating 60 or more percent of his calories as carbs. And a lot of them is unprocessed carbs. I'm sorry, it's highly processed carbs, you know, the gels and, and the sugar solutions and, you know, Gatorade and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so that's what really led us eventually to uh, put together Verta uh, and to do the original, you know, this, this amazing study with Dr. Sarah Hallberg in Lafayette, Indiana, with, you know, intervening with 260 people with type 2 diabetes. And it's just been a remarkable odyssey.